on this my generation. Go extreme. Sweet. Flying high keeps these people grounded. When you're two stories up, all your problems seem pretty far away. Plus, a minimalist approach to mountain biking. It used to be, well, what happened here at the wheel? That was years ago. Now, the typical remark is, how do I get one of those? How do I get into that? And he's clocked 90,000 miles and still willing to go the extra mile. I like for people to understand that they can do way more than they think they can. You don't have to let age be a limiting factor. My Generation is made possible by Auto and Home Insurance from the Hartford. Helping to make a difficult time a little less difficult for drivers 50 and over. Information about our program, including how to find an agent, is available at hartfordautoinsurance.com. For you. For someone you love. For care in the home, we are here. Interim Healthcare. When it matters most, count on us. The Five Star Responder by Great Call is a mobile personal safety device. One touch lets you speak with trained agents who will identify you and your location, evaluate your situation, and get you the help you need. Hi, and thanks for joining us. I'm Lisa Givens. Now, have you ever thought about taking on a physical challenge just to see if you could actually do it? Sometimes pushing past what holds you back and completing the task can be a tremendous rush and a life-altering experience. Well, the folks you're about to meet understand what it takes to succeed outside their comfort zone. What are you made of? And do you have what it takes to go extreme? If you are trying to get in touch with your inner daredevil, you might want to choose something that comes with a safety net. Trapeze is taking people to new heights and showing them how liberating letting go can be. When you're only four foot 11, 23 feet is a long way up. But standing on this tiny board way up in the rafters, Kathy Hart feels like she's on top of the world. Oh, sweet. Up and out, hold the hollow long sweep, seven. Hep. Kathy, that looks beautiful. When I tell people that I do flying trapeze, their first reaction is, wait, what, you what? Like, like, in the air? What started as a twice a month pastime for Kathy quickly became a twice a week habit. It's definitely an addiction, but it's much more than that. It's really a passion and it really pushes the boundaries of what I think is possible for me, not just in trapeze, but in the rest of my life. In the rest of her life, Kathy is a mom and a sculptor, and she draws a straight line from being an artist to being a trapeze artist. Trapeze has really informed my art making in thinking I just have to take a risk and it might not work, but let's just see what happens. Kathy, her husband Dennis and their two sons made a big deal of going to the Big Apple Circus every year. So when Kathy read an article about trapeze school just months after her husband died two and a half years ago, she immediately signed up. It was a way for me to focus that nothing else gave me. Because when you're up on the platform, you can't think about anything else. You have to focus on what is exactly right in front of you. Flying trapeze as a circus art is one of those things that you can't do while you're thinking about anything else. And I think that's one of the things that keeps people coming back, is that when you're two stories up, all your problems seem pretty far away. Oh yeah, don't start thinking it, it doesn't help at all. <laughs> what we're doing here is both incredibly meaningful because I think it changes how people see themselves and see the world, and also incredibly ridiculous. <laughs> we're flying through the air. Mandy says many students get hooked, not by the adrenaline rush, 
but by the way trapeze brings together body, mind, and spirit. Flying trapeze itself is physically demanding. It will help you build your shoulders, your core, your back, your legs. And then for most people, standing on the edge of a platform and jumping off is pretty ludicrous. And figuring out what it takes to trust yourself to do that is I think a huge mental and emotional journey. I am so motivated to be in good shape so I can fly better and it's really good for my mental health. It's like there's this zany part of my personality that gets to come out here and I just love it. Whether it's for fun or fitness, flying trapeze is on the upswing. It's soaring in popularity with families because almost anyone of any age can fly. It's something we can do together and we can be at different levels but still do it at the same time. And it's nice to have something that you can do that way. And you don't have to look like a flying Walenda to defy gravity. As long as you can hold your body weight on a bar, you can get airborne. The majority of our students are probably in their 20s and 30s, but we have a strong contingent of students in our 40s, 50s, 60s, and even some in their 70s. There's all these messages internalized and from our culture at large about what we can and should do as we become older adults. I love it. And I just want to add that same feeling to your seven. Right now, you're hitting a great seven. The boomers who come to do flying trapeze are people who aren't going to buy into those messages at all. Even a fear of heights won't keep students grounded. I'm still scared of heights when I go up there. I think I've been up that ladder over 200 times, and each time I'm still scared of heights. But literally, there's a safety net, and so I'm hooked. Very nice. Oh, and guess who else is acrophobic? When I first took a trapeze class, I would characterize myself as extremely afraid of heights, but it's one of those ways that trapeze is cheaper than therapy because it's this place where we can take fear and in a controlled, safe environment, you can face those fears. Flying trapeze was Kathy's therapy, helping her work through her grief. But learning to leap, let go of the bar, and sail through the air taught her some deeper life lessons. Things like letting go, working my way through fear, trying to step into the unknown, and learning to trust myself, and learning to trust that everything was going to be all right. And it gave me a sense of hope. In her two years of flying, Kathy's gone from a simple split to difficult twists and flips. Now she's working towards flying without safety lines. One thing that I have gotten to see that I have just loved is her fierceness come out. That she is now a flyer who does big tricks and she does them well and you gotta tackle those with your teeth, you know? You can't play it safe and cautious. It's a lot easier to be daring when you've got a community of classmates rooting for you. Close. Not rivals pitting themselves against you. With a lot of other um, athletic activities, it can be easy to feel competitive. But we work so hard to make sure anytime you're stepping off that board, you know every person who's watching is cheering for you. There's just a really wonderful feeling of shared support and goodwill because we all know how hard it is. One thing that's not hard for Kathy? Performing before 200 people in the school's aerial arts show. I love performing in the trapeze shows. It's a night of magic with music and costumes and the crowd and the lights. It is like being in the circus for a night. I get the opportunity to wear a tutu at my age. It just makes me laugh. For both teacher and student, it's that breathtaking leap of faith in trapeze and in life that keeps them coming back for more. I have the best job ever. <laughs> I get to be a part of helping people defy their expectations. Very nice, Tim. I think there's a real power that comes in doing something that is dynamic and thrilling and going back out into the world inspired and refreshed and hopefully um, a little bit bolder. Being able to do trapeze has just been like a second chance for me. If you have a sense of joy in your life and physical activity, it just makes all the difference. It can just really change the way you see the world.
Now, this is interesting. The first Flying Trapeze Act was performed in 1859 by a French acrobat named Jules Leotard. Yes, the body-hugging costume he wore was later named after him. For more information about how you can go extreme with trapeze, visit our website. We're at mygeneration.org. Later, digging deep takes this man far beyond the finish line. Yeah! I feel most alive when I'm doing those very difficult things where I'm finding out a little bit more of what I'm made of. And now the story of a man who is never too tired to search for balance in his life. He's a man with two identities. When he's tuning pianos, call him Terry Peterson. But when he's doing this, call him the Unigeezer. Uni for unicycle, geezer for geezer. And, uh, you know, some people take issue with that. They say 55, 56, that's not a geezer, but you know what? It's, I, I picked it out because I thought it was catchy. You know, you remember it, plus it's, it's, not, it's not a moniker, a name, a nickname that I can outgrow, like Boy George or Kid Rock. So it's gonna, you know, I'll be able to grow into that one. Terry Peterson, the Unigeezer, is one of the best unicyclists in the world. He and a handful of other extreme riders are changing the image of this one-wheeled sport. Hi, dear. So it used to be, you know, da 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 or where'd you get, the, you know, what happened to your other wheel? That was years ago. Now it's just the opposite. The typical remark is, that's awesome. That's badass, dude. Or how do I get one of those? How do I get into that? He has six different unicycles. This one is for long distance. He covered 100 miles once in 11 hours. Yeah, there we go. We got her going now, baby. He practices in his backyard in Torrance, California. The stairs are great training for this. And a landing like this prepares him for this. What we're gonna do is hop over you. No problem, right? <laughs> not at all. I'm not 56. I'm 18 with 38 years experience. Terry got on a unicycle when he was eight, but he didn't really get serious about the sport until he turned 50. What basically motivated me was being a piano tuner. You know, you sit around a lot. And uh, so I was thinking, what could I do to get myself in shape? And how about unicycling? I went from 170 to about 140, maybe a little under. Went from a 34 waist to a 29. All my old clothes wouldn't fit anymore, I had, which, you know, use a belt now to cinch him up. Today, he's more than just a cyclist. He's a passionate evangelist for the sport. Isn't that hard to ride? <laughs> ah, only when you fall. Yeah, but it's just like a bike. Once you learn, you don't forget. I bet you could ride one. Have you ever tried to ride a unicycle? No. You ever thought about it? Kind of. Really? Now that you saw me riding this one, are you thinking that maybe you could learn? Yeah. Good for you, man. All right. The most difficult feat he ever attempted was a grueling climb up Fargo Street. With a 33% grade, it's the steepest street in Los Angeles. If he could make it to the top, it would be a record breaker. With a unicycle, unlike a bike, there's no gears to help you climb up steep hills. You can't coast, so you're pedaling every inch of the way. It was four exhausting minutes of painful pedaling. Halfway through, you didn't think you'd make it. Yeah! You did it. That's badass, dude. <laughs> Today will be different. He's headed out for a pleasure ride. Hey, it's the twins. Why hey, hi, Javier. Javier. How are you? But first, a quick stop at his favorite bike shop, run by the twins, Javier and Juan, and Beethoven. Yes. He's, a, he's a great guy, a great unicycle rider. They've seen people take up unicycling, but no one can top Terry's riding. Have you ever tried unicycling, either of you? We tried. Hey, we tried because uh, 
Since uh, we sell unit cycles, we said we have to go out there and test ride them after we're done with them. But it's, it's not easy. It's, we know that it's the balance is, is something you have to build up. I can really move on this one now. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect day to head out to the rugged trails overlooking Simi Valley, northwest of L.A. Mountain unicycling has been around for about 20 years, but recently it's gained popularity, though it's still rather invisible. I like to say we're like mountain lions. We're out there, you just don't see us very often because uh, for, every one, uh, for every one unicyclist, there's probably 10,000 mountain bikers. So even though there's quite a few of us, we're spread out over the, over the, over the state, over the country, over the globe. Okay. You guys don't think you'd ever want to try something like that? Just out of curiosity? Yeah. Okay, I'll give it a shot. Terry treats every encounter as a chance to make another convert. Look at that! Oh, whoa! whoa. <laughs> you all right? Conscious thing about thinking I'm gonna... Yeah, your feet will go right on the ground. There he goes! Yeah. Better! Look at that! Oh, oh, you no, could no, be no. doing that in a week, I guarantee. But fellow bikers aren't the only thing you encounter on the trail. No, hold it, guys. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Oh, wow. Hold it. Even risk takers like Terry treat the locals very carefully. There you go, pal. There you go. In you go. Go that way now. Go ahead. Now that the trail is clear, it's time to get back to riding. I asked Terry what kind of person puts in the thousands of hours it takes to get this good at something so difficult. His answer was surprisingly Ooh. open. It helps to be a type A personality, which I am. I have a lot of excess energy, even at my age, and that could be due to the fact that all my life I've had ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. But the great thing about having that, and I don't even think of it as a disorder, I think of it as a benefit, because you can hyper-focus on what you love to do, in my case, riding a unicycle. I don't see myself quitting. I see myself riding well into my 80s. I want to be the oldest extreme unicyclist, as I probably am at this point. And what would Terry be if he weren't an extreme unicycler? Getting fat, <laughs> for sure. I'm Val Zavala for My Generation. Today, Terry is one of the few unicyclists in the world over 50 to have successfully jumped and cleared a full set of eight stairs, a six-foot phone booth, and a seven-foot tractor. We totally give it up to you, Terry. Be a part of the conversation. Send an email to mygeneration at aarp.org or like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. He is a world-class extreme athlete. Program.